So this this is Adam Danico of Lorna Shore, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious podcast. So good to see you again. I've interviewed you quite a few times. The last time at the yes, Canal, yes. the Canal Club yes, here yes. in Richmond. Mm-hmm. How you been? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Where are you guys located when you're not on the road? The Garden State, New Jersey. Oh, okay. I'm originally <laughs> yeah. from Long Island, so not too far from. Oh, hell yeah. Hell down yeah. to Richmond now. So before I even get started, I've got to tell you, to the Hellfire is probably one of the heaviest things I've heard in if. The last few years, if not forever, that sucker is a beast. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely a heavy track. It's, that's the point of it. So I'm glad that it, 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 it uh, oh my it god, being being received that way. <laughs> what, what has been the feedback to it so far? Pretty much that. It's been awesome. Uh, people people think it's you know our best work to date, which is you know that's always good feedback for us because you know with each release we want to do better than the last release. I mean we're only in competition with ourselves, so if we are out doing our last release, then I'm 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 satisfied. So. Um, yeah, it's just basically been an overwhel- overwhelmingly positive uh, response. People are, are enjoying the, the, the song. People are enjoying Will. So overall, it seems to be uh, awesome. And, so uh, I, I don't know if you can well. tell me. I don't know if you can tell me this, or if this is a spoiler or not. But it's, I haven't heard the rest of the record yet. Is the rest of the record the same, or follow? No, it's suit? actually not. No, it's actually not. Um, we didn't. If we did three Hellfire songs, it would take away from Hellfire. So I think that the, the album is meant to be diverse. Um, it's meant to show all sides of the band. Um, when we were writing the EP, I think uh, we wanted to display different elements of the band. And I think that when we sat down and, you know, was brainstorming the EP, the, the song that ended up coming out to be Hellfire, we was like, we want to start the record off with like a dark, heavy song that's really a good display of vocals. Um, and that's kind of what we did. It was like, we wanted to write a heavy song that was dark, that was a, a good song to allow a vocalist to to shine on. And the other two songs are not like that. And, and I think for a good reason, I think it shows the diversity of the band. If we wrote three Hellfires, it would be kind of lame. It would, the other two would just kind of feel like, why would I listen to the other two when it's exactly like Hellfire? Um, the other, the other two are, are, are different from each other as well as different from Hellfire. So I think if you are a fan of the band and like different elements of the band, there is something for you on that EP. And, and, and if you prefer a song like Hellfire and you don't like the other ones, then then cool, just listen to Hellfire. Um, and if you don't, if you like other elements of the band, that's more present in the other songs. And, and, and in my opinion, I think Hellfire is the weakest of the, the songs as far as really? perspective. Not in the sense of like what's heavy, because I mean, right, I, don't right. think that makes a good, I don't think that makes no. a good song. I think as far as from a songwriting perspective, the sure. other two songs, in my opinion, are stronger. Um, the thing that's strong about the Hellfire song is that it's a good display of vocals. So for us to unveil a new vocalist, right. um, that's a good song to open with. But if we already had a vocalist and, and we already unveiled him, that wouldn't be a song we would lead with. It would be one of the two other songs. What was the, uh, first of all, how long did it take you to find the right vocalist? And then what was the, uh, what was it like getting used to writing with a new partner or a new person? So, so I think it was like a longer process considering the fact that like how the world kind of shaped up. So yeah. when we found, so we basically found Will as a fill-in for Europe. Um, and, and, you know, I wanted to kind of test the waters to see how he would be before, you know, putting someone in the band because uh, I just want to make sure like, okay, how would you be in the, you know, my two things were how would you be in the, in the live element so how would you be performing live also how would you be on the road with each other would, would, would we enjoy being around you would you hang out with other people would all important stuff fans? right yeah, those are all important stuff. it's not just like going on stage for 30 minutes performing and like then you're a good vocalist it's like you know how would you do i want to be with you those other 23 and a half hours do i want to you know how are you with the fans how are do you do you offer help like what is it that you do because you know we're not a band that has five crew members like we're a band that pretty much goes out by ourselves so if you're not willing to help with some of the load it's just like I kind of need that extra help. You know, we right. can't always afford to bring out crew. So it's like, are you willing to do the other extra effort? And he was willing to do all that sort of stuff. So it was great. And then the other thing outside of the touring element is the, in the studio element, because yes, you can perform and, and, and you, ha- you can, you can, you know, um, perform someone else's material, but like, how would it be if we gave you a blank Lauren Shore song? How, what would you write about? What would you sound like? Would you, would you make the song? Would you, would you tie in the song or whatever? And, and that was kind of my final test for Will or for anyone who's going to be the vocalist. It was like, but for, for Will specifically, it was like, let's see how this would be. And, and he like knocked it out of the park. And, and it was really fun to watch him work because he worked really hard. Uh, and I think we all work really hard. So, you know, when we were there for two weeks, he was every day in the other, in Studio B at Josh's studio, just like demoing out vocals. Like, even though he wasn't 
recording vocals that day. He was like, let me just try ideas. Let me try lyrics. Let me try patterns. Even if he didn't use it or not, the fact that he was working every day at that was just awesome for me to watch because it just shows like your hard work and your effort and you're just trying to make this right. And that's really good because we all have that same effort, you know, myself, Andrew and Austin. So it was just cool to what witness that. It was cool to see that. And it just showed like, okay, this guy obviously puts in effort. He wants to be here. He's excited to be here. He's very grateful to be here. So it was just like awesome to be in the studio with him. And that like kind of was the, 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 um, the final like piece that we needed was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, in the studio, you're, you're here, you put in the work, you're open to us giving suggestions. You're open to trying things out. You're open to, you know, uh, suggestions from a producer that we hire for that reason. So like, it was just really, really awesome to see him work and and it felt very seamless. Um, We didn't have to hold his hand. I mean, we obviously gave suggestions, but like, that's what you're supposed to do within a band, but we didn't have to like hold his hand. It was just more so like, Hey, why don't you try this? And that works. And he was like, this is cool. So it was really, really easy to work with. And, 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 I think on, on all on all aspects of it. So it's been, uh, it was just awesome. So that's cool. I, all I can really say about that. No, that's great. Are you guys all right together? And, and how did you deal with it during the pandemic? Because obviously you weren't, I don't think you could be together. Yeah. So, so uh, actually during the pandemic, I was living in North Carolina. So for the greater portion of last year, I was uh, I was down, down the South. And, uh, you know, when we knew we were going to do the EP was around maybe around July, August, so around this time. And uh, what I was doing was just writing a bunch of ideas beforehand anyway. And then I would come up to New Jersey to visit, like, friends and family. And then when I would, when I would come up, like, we would, you know, myself, Andrew, and Austin would uh, kind of just, like, go over some ideas and, and brainstorm some stuff. So at first, like, before I moved back to New Jersey in the fall, uh, I was just coming up every month for, like, a week at a time. And we were kind of just, like, you know, just hashing out ideas. And then when I actually moved up officially uh, back in like uh, October, November is when we uh, were finishing the stuff because we went to the studio in November. So it was just a lot of like back and forth. It was a lot of sending ideas. It was a lot of a lot of that stuff. So it was um, it was, you know, making do with the times. But I mean, it's it's, uh, it's not really hard because we kind of already do that stuff anyway, even before the pandemic is you send ideas back and forth. Uh, right. You know, you obviously can't get, you know, even if the pandemic didn't happen, I was living in North Carolina. So we would have to learn how to adopt to you know, sending ideas back and forth and, 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 and doing stuff like that. So it was pretty easy. Um, and then we, you know, for two weeks in November before we went to the studio, we really did a bulk of the work, which was myself, Andrew, and Austin. Um, and we, we wrote, uh, we needed to do three songs, but we ended up finishing six songs, six or seven songs, and had a bunch of other ideas left over. So we went into the studio super prepared and pretty much spent the first three days in the studio trying to figure out what three songs do we want to use and whatnot. Right. When you guys are writing, are you right? Well, Two questions. First, when you're writing, are you writing with the live setting in mind, like how the song is going to sound on stage? Or are you writing the song for the song's sake and then figuring it out later? Always for the song's sake. Most people listen to songs with, you know, uh, not in a live environment. You know, if you if you don't if I don't come to your town, you how else do you witness the song? Right. And I think uh, we we always figure it out after. Um, you know, we're mindful of it, but at the end of the day, it's like I care more about getting the song proper than being like, whoa how is it going to be live? It's like, we'll, we'll figure it out. If it means running a track for this sound, or if it means, you know, uh, doing something else for this thing, or, or, or I will play this thing or whatever it may be like, I'm more concerned about getting the sound to be right. And uh, cause I think that's how most people consume music. You know, sometimes people see a band once a year, but they'll listen to a song 12 months out of the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's like, I want to get that right. Then worry about, you know, getting it perfect for the live environment. Right. We can always figure it out. What about, uh, is there a message or something you want your fans to take away from after listening to a Lorna Shore record or specifically this EP? What I just want anyone to take away is, is, is to um, find something that you enjoy. And I think a lot of things nowadays is more so people complaining about what they don't like rather than spending time talking about what they do like. And I think that just what I would like to see people in music is just champion the stuff they like and just disregard the stuff they don't like. So if there's stuff that we write that you don't like, cool. Find something that you do like, whether it's our band, whether it's another band. I think that I just see so much negativity around consumption of music where it's like, oh, I, I don't like this. I prefer this. I prefer that. It's like, just because you have an ability to speak on this stuff doesn't mean it's necessary because you're just wasting this energy talking about something that's irrelevant. And I know we all want to be heard. I know we all want our voices to be heard. But like, wouldn't, wouldn't you rather spend time consuming stuff that you enjoy rather than complaining about something that you right. don't like? So that's just kind of what I hope for, for music consumption in general. I think it's so easy now, especially even in the last year when everybody's sitting in front of their keyboards, they're keyboard mm-hmm. warriors, and they can do whatever the hell they want. And there's no repercussions, but it does have some sort of repercussion, I think, down the road, because like you said, instead of talking shit about some band, you could be boosting the ones you like who actually need the help. 
exactly. You're just wasting your time. Uh, you're, you made you, you you decided to make a choice that you complaining about something you don't like is more important than you talking about the things that you do like. Um, and I, I just think that to me, when I don't like something, I just click X out and I never talk about right, it. Right, move on and, and just... And, and, exactly. I'd rather share about stuff that I like. And, and not for nothing, just like for me as an artist, it's tiring to see. It's, I'm tired to get messages. I'm tired of getting backhanded messages being like, oh, I just love this last record. So like, why did you do this? It's like, you know, I know you're trying to give me a compliment, but it's very backhanded. And it's like, if you just have a preference for an old record awesome own it and i'm i'm happy that you enjoy it but to make to make me feel like i'm a puppet's unit and have to keep creating that you're, you're barking up the wrong tree maybe someone else will do that but like i'm going to be an autonomous person and do the things that i want to do so just because you have access to me doesn't mean you have the ability to tell me what to do um and i, I just want to find people to find the distinction just because just because you can message the band just because you can message the individual member just because you can complain on the internet doesn't mean it's something that the, the route to always take and i just question people or ask people to question themselves why am I doing this? What am I trying to get out of it? Um, and I think, is there a better way to be more positive in this world that's also filled with so much negativity? And I just feel I, I'd rather champion the things that I enjoy than, than shit on the things that I don't like. Because it might be something enjoyable to somebody else. So why take that away from someone right. else and, and, and rather than be like, let me build up things that I enjoy because like, I care more about building up the metal community than dismantling the things that I don't like. And it just seems a, a waste. I 100% agree with you. So you kind of touched on it there for a second, but do you consciously go into writing a new record thinking about the same sort of stuff you've written in the past or not trying to write the same record? Are you always trying to expand or do you think always. about staying with what your fans would like and they're used to? I'm never thinking about the fans. Uh, not that I don't appreciate them. Right. No, no. Like, I know what you're saying. Right. It's like, I can't control the fans. Um, I can't, and I can't control the fans taste. So the, the, the metaphor that I always use is that, you can be the, the best piece of Wagyu beef, a cow that was bred for you and that was you know made just for you. And it's like this $500 piece of steak. And there's someone out there who just literally does not like steak. And it just shows that like, I can't control your taste. And, and it doesn't matter how good you can be, there's someone out there that doesn't like it. So it's just like, when I think about that, why not just make myself happy and write the music that we want to write? Right. And, and I guess the way that I approach it is like, I look at past catalogs, like, okay, in, in, a, in a very simple debrief of what was working, what wasn't working and what do I get to add? So it's just like, okay, looking at the past catalog. Okay. What was cool about the past catalog? Okay. What was stuff that I liked? All right, cool. What was stuff that like maybe fell short or, and, and it's like, and why did it fall short? Right. And then it's like, and, and if I, if it did fall short, can I improve upon it? Or it did it fall short because like, what was other reasons or and then what do i get to add it's like what didn't we do on the press past record that i want to do or what didn't we do that was what did we miss or what you know whatever it may be so i'm always constantly looking at the past records to to use as lessons but like i'm not like oh let me just replicate that it's more so just right. like what about it did i enjoy that i want to do again uh, or what about it didn't i do that i feel like i want to add or or what about it that like kind of didn't go over well that like i want to improve upon so it's like i'm using it as lessons but i'm also not I'm just also trying to focus on like, what else do I want to do? What right. else do I want to create? What, what, you know, what sounds do I want to have? And what, what am I not hearing in the music world that I want to bring to the table? Cause that's kind of always what Lorna Shore has always been is just like, what itches am, are not being scratched when I listen to music that like, I wish was there, you know, you listen right. to a band, you're like, man, this is cool, but I wish there was more of X or I wish there was Y or I wish there was, you know, right. Z or whatever, or, 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 or there's too much of this that I wish was like that. And I, and I, and I think about that when I listen to music and go and like, well, now I have the ability to do it. I have a platform to do it on. So instead of me going on the internet complaining that so-and-so band doesn't do right. this thing, I can just, just do get it. information. I can just do it myself. Right. And that makes a hundred percent sense. So what do you guys have planned uh, for the live? Are you taking this out on the road now that things are yeah, opening so up? So we have four shows in August um, around the release of the EP. So the, the, the 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Um, and we're playing, you know, uh, we're releasing the EP on those shows, uh, or obviously we're on those shows are playing the EP and, and, you know, playing some older songs. But um, I think the bulk of touring is going to be next year and because we're also focused on doing LP number four. So I think that's our plan this year is to, is uh, we're going into the studio in November. So I think from now till November is, is to working on, uh, working on the new record because we want to just maintain the momentum and put out new material and, and have a new record out next year. So then by the time touring comes around, you'll have the EP and the new record to tour on. Exactly. That'd be perfect. Mm -hmm. That's all I've got. Did I miss anything at all? I don't know. Do you have any? Thank you, my friend. Good seeing you again. You, you got to take care. Stay I'll safe. Be well. All right. Later. Yeah, bye. 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 Now if you want to, you're all good then.